I thought I would find you here. Joanna, my sister. Please sit. Listen to this. You are a holy people to Jehovah your God. And Jehovah your God has chosen you to become his people, his special property out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. The words of Moses, speaking to our people before they entered this land. Yes, and just before that, he told them to destroy all the idols of the Canaanites. I wonder if there are more idols in the land now than there were then. At every turn, our people bow and pray to them. You're doing all you can. But they don't listen. I listen. And I think you're great. You're like Elijah. I'm surprised Jehovah uses me at all. Well, I'm not. You always want to do the right thing. It makes us proud. Yes, my lord. Get up. Go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim judgment against her, for their wickedness has come to my attention. prepared a meal for you. I'm not hungry. They haven't spoken a word to me in hours. Your brothers are young, Jonah. The news you brought to us this morning, it was heavy. What did your brothers say? It's lies afraid they'll kill me, skin me alive. He doesn't think they should even be warned. Just let Jehovah slaughter them all. Niebuhr doesn't believe they will listen. What do you think? I think if it's Jehovah's will to destroy them, he wouldn't have commanded me to go. But I do think Eber is right. Why would they listen? Our own people don't listen. And yet, the warning still goes out. But when has Jehovah ever asked a prophet to go to a foreign land to preach judgment against it? Joe and I, I don't have all the answers. To be sent to declare judgment in the heart of Assyria, it's unlike anything Jehovah's asked his prophets to do before. But if it's Jehovah's will that you should go, then you should go. He must have good reason for sending you there. Trust him. I'm going to pack you some cakes, too. I wish I could go with you. These lies afraid they'll kill me? Skin me alive.
You're leaving without saying goodbye? You need to go back inside, Joanna. But we had things prepared for you. You'll need them in Nineveh. You're not going to Nineveh, are you? No. Tarshish. No! Jonah, that's the wrong way! Go back! We can talk to Father- Joanna! I can't go to Nineveh. I just can't do it. But what will you do in Tarshish? When will you be back? I don't know. Maybe never. Never? Then who's going to Nineveh? Who's going to tell them what Jehovah said? I'm sorry, Joanna. I don't know what Jehovah will do. But I just can't do it. It's too much. He doesn't need me anyway. We need you! And you're Jehovah's prophet! You're like Elijah, remember? Not anymore. Go home, Joanna. I'm sorry. But if it's Jehovah's will that you should go, then you should go. Trust him.
passenger! It's down below! It's down below! Why are you sleeping? Get up! Call out to your god! Perhaps the true god will show his concern for us, and we will not perish! and the dry land. I am... I was his prophet. What have you done? He told me to go to Nineveh and deliver a message. Instead, I ran away. What must we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? What must we do? Lift me up and throw me into the sea and the sea will calm down for you. For I know that it's because of me that this violent storm has come upon you. You die! If we kill Jehovah's prophet, what will he do to us? If Jehovah wants him in Nineveh, will he be angered if we throw him overboard? Take to the oars, man! Run for your lives! blood since you have done as you pleased oh jehovah Nothing. We should sacrifice to his God for sparing us. of the grave, I cried to you for help. Please hear my voice. I know I have been driven away from your sight. How will I gaze again upon your holy temple? Oh, may my prayer come into you. With a voice of thanksgiving, I will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will pay.
Joan. My name is Joan. Grab his other arm. We need to get him to the house. Papa says you are a prophet. I was a prophet. Papa says that you were swallowed by a big fish. Yes. Why would a fish swallow you? Well, I was in the water. Why are you in the water? I was on a ship. Then I was in the water. Why were you on a ship? Because I tried to run away from Jehovah. When you were in the fish, were you scared? Yes. Did you pray a lot? Yes. Why did you pray to God if you were running away from him? Sorry, Joanne. Please forgive me. Father waited for you to come home every day. He never gave up hope. What happened? A fish? How's that possible? It was a miracle, Islaya. Jehovah saved you. So what will you do now? I don't know. I think it's time for everyone to get some rest. We can talk more tomorrow. Jonah, I'm sorry about the things I said before you left. I didn't realize... It's no matter, Islaya. My decision to run was my own. Thank you. Good to have you back. Thank you. Thank you. I'm still proud of you. Sleep well, my son. Father. Yes? I can't stop thinking about those men on that ship. All the cargo they lost. The fear in their eyes. What if they didn't survive? I put them in danger. Disobedience often hurts others, Jonah. Not just ourselves. We'll pray for those men. Do you think Jehovah will ever use me again? He's shown you mercy, Jonah. He brought you home. Let's be content with that for now. Father. I'm sorry. I know, my son. I know. Let's try to get some rest.
Jonah. My lord. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Get up. Go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim to her the message that I tell you. Yes. Yes, thank you. I will do as you command. May Jehovah be with you, my son. He saved me from the heart of the sea. He can save me again in the days ahead. Here, I made these cakes for you. Thank you, Jonah. How long will it take you to get to Nineveh? If all goes well, maybe 40 days. May it go well. traveling to Nineveh really I was just there I was selling some horses I'll tell you this I'm glad to be going home you should really be careful over there that's what I've heard tell me about it well the city is huge it would probably take you three days to walk around it the chariots they're the best in the world and the horses. The horses are magnificent. What about the people? <laughs> the people? They worship gods of war. What do you think they're like? They love conquest and violence. It's like bread to them. That's comforting. <laughs> hey, don't worry. Just don't attract any attention to yourself. Stick to your business and you'll be just fine. <laughs> what is your business anyway? I'm a prophet of Jehovah. He's sending me to proclaim judgment against it.
what about the people? They worship gods of war. What do you think they're like? Just 40 days more. Nineveh will be overthrown. In just 40 days more, Nineveh will be overthrown. He's a foreigner. In just 40 days more, Nineveh will be overthrown. In just 40 days more. Who could possibly Nineveh overthrow our city? Is he crazy? He looks like an Israelite. The true God has spoken. of this city has come to the attention of the true God. Jehovah, the true God, has spoken. This city will be destroyed. Nineveh will be overthrown. Jehovah, the true God, has spoken. Your city will be destroyed. In 35 days, this city will be destroyed. Nineveh will be overthrown. This city will be destroyed. In 25 days, we can't just leave here. What leave? should we do? Listen, can I get these are like uh, Jehovah. What should we do? Should, should we flee the city? We can't just leave here. What should we, we leave do? Leave our homes? Where should we go? The true God will overthrow Listen, if we repent, maybe his God will have mercy on us. According to the prophet, there is only 20 days left until the destruction of this city. Throughout the city, people are fasting, putting on sackcloth. They are asking the prophet how Jehovah wants him to behave, and they're trying to do as he says. Is that what Jonah's telling them to do? No, the people simply reason that because there's a warning in time before calamity strikes, maybe this God will change his mind. What else have we learned about Jonah? Ninevite reported overhearing a conversation of Jonah's. It seems originally he chose not to come. Instead, he fled to Tarshish, but was thrown overboard. Then he claims Jehovah sent a fish to swallow him and bring him back. Is he insane? Maybe not. This man speaks for the God of Israel, a God of miracles known for his greatness and his power. He might be powerful in Israel, but we have our own gods here. True, but Jehovah is the one responsible for humiliating the gods of Egypt, even destroying their army in the Red Sea. He's also the one who brought about the great flood mentioned in our histories. He did this because the people of the time were extremely violent. Call my scribe. The city will be destroyed!
Hear the word of the king, people of Nineveh. Hear the word of the king. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no man or beast, herd or flock, should eat anything at all. They should not take food, nor should they drink any water. Let them be covered with sackcloth, both man and beast, and let them call earnestly to God and turn from their evil ways and from the violence they practice. Who knows whether the true God may reconsider what he intends to do and turn back from his burning anger that we may not perish. Something should be happening. There's nothing. Would Jehovah actually pardon the city? No. No, that's not possible. How could Jehovah change his mind? What would these people think of me? What good is a prophet if his words don't come true? Was this not my concern when I was in my own land? That is why I tried to flee to Tarshish in the first place. For I knew that you are a compassionate and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loyal love, and one who feels grieved over calamity. Oh, Jehovah, please take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. Is it right for you to be so angry? I must leave the city. We know you're a prophet of the true God. We have faith that you speak truth. Please stay in our home. No. We'll make you comfortable. Do not stay in the city.
so quickly. Jehovah still cares for me. Jehovah, let me die! Take my life! It is better for me to die than to live. Is it right for you to be so angry over the bottle gourd plant? right to be angry. So angry, I want to die. You felt sorry for the bottle gourd plant, which you did not work for, nor did you make it grow. It grew in one night and perished in one night. Should I not also feel sorry for Nineveh, the great city, in which there are more than 120,000 men who do not even know right from wrong? as well as their many animals. Says he saved us. No, Jehovah saved you. I was just. I was just a messenger. Thank you. What are you doing? I've written about Nineveh. But also about Jehovah's great mercy, both to the people there and to me. 
Was it hard to write about all that? Painful. So, what will you do now? Whatever Jehovah asked me to do.